<clears throat> okay. Hello. Okay. Okay. Hello?
Welcome everybody. My name is Sum Diener and I'll be you're watching twitch.tv slash randomania. Tonight is uh, we're gonna have a match with on the Dragon Quest 1 Super Famicom tournament. Coming up is Lavkian versus Labitz951. <clears throat> so this is Dragon Quest 1, the Super Famicom remake version. Um, it's not actually a randomizer, but uh, we'll be going through this game as quickly as we can. And uh, just coming up, this is a loser's bracket match between these two players. So both players will need to win the match or be eliminated. So hopefully we'll see a really good contest between these two players. Um, let me... Okay. We're almost all set with the runners. I got the race channel open here, so... I hope to bring up the chat, too. Okay. So coming up, we're going to see Dragon Quest 1 for Super Famicom. Um, so there's uh, not going to be too much in the way of uh, randomness as far as the characters and the monsters go, but the encounter rate and some other factors are still going to cause a lot of divergence in these two players who are going to have to adapt as the run is going to, to, uh, to, to do well at this game. We're doing a category called Dragon Loop. Uh, in the mid-game section, we're going to be utilizing something called the Dragon Loop to earn a large amount of experience to, to get us strong enough to do the rest of the game. <clears throat> just another minute, folks. One racer just needs a minute. So, um, we're going to be getting started really soon with the race. So we're going to see a lot of differences in this remake version for the Super Famicom. Well, obviously, notably, you can see here uh, the, the text is in Japanese. This Super Famicom version was not released in North America, although we did get the Game Boy Color port of Dragon Warrior 1 and 2. It's very similar to this version. Um, uh, we'll also be using the Japanese timing rules, so the timer is going to start at the power on and not going to finish until the end screen at the end of the credits. Um, don't worry too much about the Japanese text, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, anybody who knows the original Dragon Warrior will find this very familiar and I'll be on hand to answer any questions you may have. I'll be going through this, it's not very complicated. So I would like to take a second to thank Randomania for hosting us on, on their channel, uh, doing all the restreaming for all of our matches this time around. Really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the race. There we go. We're going to get started really soon. Here it goes. Guys, the countdown has begun. So the racers will be getting started here in just a moment. So the race has begun, and uh, you'll see here the racer selecting a particular name here, Lafkian's Bopo. 
and Lavit's also picking Bopo. As in the original version, the name that you select will impact the um, your stat gain. So we've strict picked names that go for well, it's twofold. We want the strength, HP, growth type. That's the most important. Also, this name Bopo is a combination of short, short name, only two characters long, and it's pretty quick to enter on the screen. So the game begins here in the throne room, and the king gives us our quest for the beginning of the game. Um, see, the dragon lord has uh, invaded the castle, stolen the orb of light, kidnapped the princess, and it's our job to go beat him up. And that's what we'll be spending this game doing. Uh, so we've picked up some supplies from the treasures in the beginning of the game. Um, a bunch of gold coins, a magic key that we need to get outside, and we also pick up an herb and a torch. Here at the shop, we've spent half of the gold we started with to buy a club. Although I noticed Lavkin actually missed the medical herb in the uh, in the town or in the castle to start with. Uh, I wonder if he did that on purpose or not. Uh, we also grab this Kimura wing in the dresser. You'll notice some of these items in this game have uh, searchable locations that have some items that we can get, and uh, some of them are very useful, very important. So here at the uh, the item store, we've got 60 gold left. We're going to spend 20 on the dragon scale. Uh, we're going to buy two more torches and two more medical herbs. This is going to give us enough supplies. We're going to work our way over to Myra. The torches have an added benefit in this version. We can use them as items in battle to throw them at our enemies uh, to deal between four and six damage. And we're going to make use of this. These three torches combined are going to be strong enough to, excuse me, defeat one of the monsters in the Myra region, or it's called Cole and Dragon Warrior. So now we've hit the overworld, we've got our club, our dragon scale, it's time to start fighting monsters. Before we tr proceed too much further, uh, we really want to reach level 2. So we're going to stick to these hills tiles, we're going to see blue slimes, red slimes, and drakies here. Drakies are worth the most experience, 3 points. We need 7 points to reach level 2. So if you're familiar with the original game in this remake, the monsters are worth a lot more experience and gold. The experience values are adjusted a little bit, but for the most part, leveling up is a lot quicker. But we really want to reach level two. It's going to improve our strength a fair bit, and it's going to make handling the ghost in the next region a lot safer. Maximum HP also increases considerably, so then once we go to use one of our medical herbs, we'll go to a higher max, 22 now. So the stat gains are fixed. Both players picked the same name, so we're going to see the same stats once they level up. Both have reached level 2 and are heading east now towards Cole. Labbit's fighting the ghost, but getting a lucky dodge, defeating it without taking any damage. That's really good. So the strength bonus gives us an extra point of damage against the ghost. And the higher max HP makes fighting him more, much more reasonable. So they'll be fighting in their way towards the next area, um, earning as much experience as they can. They won't necessarily fight monsters until they reach level 3, but they'll want to be close to level 3 before moving on. It'll probably be based on when they decide to heal with medical herbs. So Lavitz wisely deciding to use his medical herb in battle against the ghost once his HP got too low. This game uses initiative to decide its in a turn order, so and it's rolled on each turn. So it's possible uh, if the monster goes second on one turn and first on another, it's possible for you to be hit two times in a row. So we want to anticipate taking damage and heal appropriately before it's too late. So both players fighting and working their way up. They both reach level three here. They're going to be healing up and moving on to the next area. So, Lavkian, good luck here. He's encountered the Scorpion. Scorpion is your best friend in this region. He's the easiest enemy to defeat. Usually is defeated by the three torches, although his torches are rolling really low. All the fours. Oh, that's really, really bad luck. All minimum rolls on the torches, and the Scorpion was not defeated. He was out of medicine, so he had no choice but to fight or run. And, I don't blame him for fighting. The thing probably only had one hit point. So he's going to make have to make the walk back to Myra, which should be okay. And he'll get the experience and gold he needs made back up along the way. 
Lavitz defeating the scorpion as expected with the torches. He's going to make his way here into town. He's going to pick up a fairy flute. We're going to need this to fight the golem about 30 minutes from now. There's also two items here in these dressers, the clothes and the strength seed. In this version, we've got some usable stat seeds that we can use to increase our stats. The values for these are random, and as such, the strength seeds, which are very important, we're actually going to be hanging on to these, making sure we uh, save the game before we use them to make sure we get some good values. Lavis here is playing a little bit more of an aggressive route. Oh, he's already reached level 4. That's really early. Um, this isn't the most safe route, but it is a little bit quicker. He's gone ahead once he was finished his business in Cole to use the Kimura Wing to go back to town rather than using the Death Warp and using the Strength Seed. Uh, using this Death Warp and the Strength Seed will take longer, but it will uh, get your experience higher because you'll need to fight some additional encounters with the uh, Hurt spell. Or, uh, But it also lets you use the Strength Seed early and you get the benefits of having uh, some extra damage for the Mountain Cave, which is going to help out a lot. But going here sooner is just going to be faster. So Lavitz should have plenty of experience and gold for everything he needs. He's made his way here to Garenham. He's going to rest up at the inn because we're going to be doing the next part, the Mountain Cave. So one of the important things to do in the Mountain Cave is we've got to get the Death Necklace. And to do that safely, we need to make sure our inventory is full. Lavkian has made it to, to Cole, not too far behind. But since he died, he might have to do the death warp strategy and take a little extra time getting uh, his supplies. So Lavitz up in front here, he's going to fill out his inventory with torches. Every empty spot is going to be a torch. He's going to hold as many medical herbs as he can. He should have a full inventory. Looks good. So to get the death necklace safely, it's important that we have a full inventory. You see, the death necklace is in a unique treasure chest in this game where its contents aren't fixed. Uh, when you open this treasure chest, it usually contains a torch inside, but occasionally, and it's one out of 16 chance uh, to be precise, uh, the treasure chest contains the death necklace. We can actually uh, trick the game into giving us the death necklace by approaching this treasure chest with a full inventory. Once we look inside, the game will roll for the contents of the treasure chest. If it's a torch, the game will then ask us, since our inventory is full, whether or not we would like to drop an item or not. We simply tell it no to close the box. Then we can reopen the box again and check again. We'll do this repeatedly over and over again until eventually we'll find the death necklace inside. We'll throw away one of our torches to make room for the death necklace and we'll proceed onwards. So yeah, Lavkian having, having to do the uh, uh, slightly slower technique here. This is uh, He's going to fight a couple monsters down here in the Mountain Cave region to get enough gold to buy his supplies. Lavitz has got his supplies and he's moving towards moving towards the Mountain Cave. He's fought a couple of good monsters, so he's got some good experience, but this magician picking on him a little bit has gonna cost him a medical herb. That was a little dangerous, but he seems to be okay. Well, there's another scorpion. Tasty scorpions. You should have no problems reaching level five, which is sometimes a little tricky with this with this route that he's taken. Lavkian, on the other hand, on the left, should have no problems reaching level five comfortably, which is something that you really want to do before before finishing this mountain cave region. And it's going to be difficult to earn more experience once your MP runs out. Still, Lavit's not really having a problem. Scorpion is your friend hooking him up with lots of experience. He's actually got two MP left, so he could potentially fight one more enemy. No, I, I'm sorry, he's got four MP. He's rolling in experience. He's going to fight this Meta, but... Ooh, rude Meta. Took the, the hurt spell and the clubbing and still didn't die. Wow. That's too bad. I wonder if... Hmm. No, he... He's going to have to just try again. He's going to have to walk out on foot and try again. I was wondering if he was going to use the Strength Seed, but then he would have to purchase an additional torch or other supplies. And while he might be inclined to get more medical herbs, I don't know that he wants to spend that much time. The, the item shop in 
in Brecon area is a long walk, so you waste a lot of time getting more supplies there. Looks like he's just going to go with his MP being what it is. He can either fight things or use the um, use some of his MP for the heal spell instead. Now that we've learned the heal spell at level four, typically you'd want to conserve your MP for uh, attacking in this section, but um, it might actually be really good to to use some of it for for healing since experience won't be as much of a concern. Lavkian encountering the Skeleton. Skeleton is the strongest enemy out here. He gives a lot of XP, but he's only safely approached by using her two times. And then on top of that, he's probably going to hit you to the point where you need to heal. So unfortunately, Lavkian already using two of his medical herbs before we even reaching the cave. Lavitz working his way back, back to the entrance. So we didn't get to see much of it earlier, but that's why these runners will be traversing this mountain cave through in the dark. As I mentioned earlier, that death necklace treasure chest requires our inventory to be full. So using a torch will make it so our inventory is not full. There is a path that you can use to um, to go through with by using a torch, by collecting the items in a different order, order excuse me. Um, but um, it requires spending additional time on the second floor of the cave, which is actually kind of dangerous. Generally not a good idea. Lavitz wisely spending his MP to uh, just destroy his enemies in his path, uh, rather than healing. The, you can just defeat things like the Magician rather than risking them hurting you, just to defeat them with the fire magic here. And... Uh, That'll actually save you time and MP in the long run. Much friendlier Meta there, getting the max damage from from Gira and going down. All right, so Labkin's working his way around. He's almost onto the second floor. I know it's a little tricky to tell if you're not familiar with it. Lavit's not too far behind. A couple of hallways. All right, there we go. Lavkian's onto the second floor. The encounters here are all very different, and he needs to watch his HP more carefully. He healed at 25, which maybe he could have stretched it a little bit further, but he's playing a little bit safer. Totally fine. So first he's going to get this treasure chest here. It's got a bunch of gold in it. The exact value is a random, but it's close. It's pretty small variance. It's about 600 or so. And this right here is the Death Necklace treasure chest, so... We read the third line there, it says Taimatsu, uh, and that's a torch, so he doesn't want that. He's going to keep checking it over and over and over again, and eventually he's going to find the death necklace inside. He's going to give Lavitz a little bit of a chance to catch up. He's not too far behind. He's on the second floor as well. He just got away from one of those scary warlocks. They have the sleep spell, which can... Uh, end your trip in the mountain cave a little abruptly. So here we go, they're both looking for the necklace. Oh, there it is on Lavkian's screen. We really want this death necklace. We sell it for 1,200 gold and it's basically going to finance our steel broadsword, uh, which we're going to be using for a very long time. Uh, so the weapon upgrade is huge. So the next treasure chest, Lapkin, he's working his way around. This one here on the right contains an iron shield, or the large shield. Again, this is very valuable item. Uh, we have no shield right now, so obviously it's a big upgrade from nothing. But um, uh, it's actually going to be the best, again, the best shield we use uh, in the entire run. Ah, really good technique Lavkian using to fight Drachima here. Drachima is worth 20 experience, so not too bad. There is a better shield, the Silver Shield, but unfortunately it's very expensive. Uh, it would require additional grinding on our route to get, and um, doesn't provide substantial additional defense against any of the major enemies, including the Dragon Lord. So it's really not quite worth it for us in in this run. So 
just a couple more treasure chests and Lafkin will be done here in the mountain cave. First item here is an MP seed. He's just going to be using this immediately. Plus three MP is the minimum, and he'll have to watch out for that in the future. Higher rolls are better, but low rolls don't necessarily put you in a lot of danger. Now that he's got everything, he's taken his equipment off, and he's going to get himself killed. We're performing a death warp here. This is a common technique in Dragon Quest RTA. Whenever you want to go back to town quickly, you can just get yourself killed. You'll lose half of your gold, but in this case, this is a lot faster than trying to leave the cave without the outside spell. Oh, thank you for splitting for me. Big, big special thanks to Noraestra for helping us with the restream here and uh, helping me out. Okay, great. Lafian, first try, he's saved the game and rolled his strength seeds. Uh, we're looking for a total of at least five. Uh, they can roll between one and three. So we want to save the game and roll those seeds together. He rolled the first one for two and the second one for three. So that totals five. So he is good to go. Lavit's right behind. Uh, he's taken his equipment off. And now this warlock here is going to whack him side the head with a stick a few times. Oh, the minimum damage gear uh, to make it take one more time. Turn. Classic. Now Lavitz has also died. All right. So the next part of the game is going to be journeying to Rimmeldar. Rimmeldar has a key or a store that sells magic keys. Magic keys are going to be very important for our progression in the game. Uh, so you see Lavitz resetting the game. He's looking for better values on his strength seeds. It's actually very important that we fish for this uh, this five. There are many, many situations in which having uh, uh, the difference between four and five strength on these seeds is actually tremendous. The golem is the biggest, the biggest point. Uh, but there are many parts of the run where having this just this one additional point of strength is going to make a big difference. <clears throat> All right, so he's journeying through this mountain cave here in the dark. This is just out of convenience. This is, or sorry, this is the marsh cave, not the mountain cave. We're done with the mountain cave. We have no further business there. Uh, it's just pretty much a straight walk down and then a walk around a little small wall. So we just do that in the dark out of convenience. It's just faster. He's working his way over here to Rimmeldar. He's going to fight the monsters along the way. A little careful with this warlock who can deal a lot of damage with his magic. And then, of course, as I said earlier, that sleep spell can always be a problem. He's reached level 6 already. That's good. We definitely want to reach level 6 before we reach Rimmeldar, although preferably we'd like to learn, earn a little more experience than just that. His encounter rate's been really high. He's got to be careful. Still a fair, fair bit of walking to go. I think he's out of medical herbs and only has 5 MP, so... He's going to have to be careful making his way. Iron Scorpion, okay. He's choosing to fight it. He's going to use the fire magic and then... Oh, that's he doesn't have an additional torch. That turned the Iron Scorpion defended, so the second fireball did him in. But he's got no way of healing. And unfortunately, this wolf here is very strong. Okay, good runaway. All right. Looks like he made it to Rimmeldar safely. That's good. That was a little scary. Just uh, probably could have taken one hit. Well, yeah, he would have taken one hit from the wolf, but two hits would have killed him. So uh, the run rates for this game are the first two attempts are 50% each. The third attempt is 75% chance of success. And the fourth attempt and on is the 7 eighths chance, 87.5%. All right, so Lavkin's made its way here to Rimmeldar. We're going to do a bunch of inventory management stuff. We've thrown away our club and our clothes. We're going to be getting better equipment, so we're just making room here. Inventory space management is part of the run here, as we saw earlier. So, of course, the death necklace, but 
in other parts of the run where we're trying to hold other equipment. We also bought uh, six magic keys. That's the most we're allowed to carry. Uh, we picked up a defense seed and used that as well as some additional gold coins. Sold the death necklace, purchased the steel sword. It's also going to get some extra supplies here. Um, two camera wings and a bunch of medicine. More medical herbs. He'll also be grabbing the HP seed, the life nut that's uh, in the town before leaving. There are three HP seeds scattered throughout the game that we'll be collecting that will give us between four and six additional maximum HP per seed for a range of 12 to 18 additional additional points. Lavitz over here on the right encountering the wolf, but he's in full health with enough MP to fight it, so he's going to throw two Giras at it and defeat it and collect a lot of experience. He's also got two medical herbs left, so yeah, that's why he chose this path here that spends more time in the wolf zone. He's kind of hoping to fight wolves. Yep, here's another wolf. He's deciding to run from it, though. I'm not sure about that. I, I think I would have just killed it for the 40 XP. But nevertheless, he's made it here to Rimaldar. Oh, maybe he was concerned about the HP he was missing, in which case I probably would just want the medical herb then. Okay. Either way, the wolf is likely to outspeed you, so... It's not going to matter too much. We'll be fighting plenty of things towards in our effort to reach level 7 uh, along the way in the next dungeon. Lafkin here has he picked up that HP seed and he used one of the Kimmer Wings to get back here to the castle. He just used a key to collect the items in the treasury, which have a whole bunch of useful things. Uh, an additional magic key, some more gold, um, and two more stat seeds, an agility and another MP seed. There's a second life seed here in the dresser in the basement, as well as a, another medical herb. And of course, the Stones of Sunlight. The Stones of Sunlight represent one of three very important quest items that we need to make the rainbow drop. And we need the rainbow drop in order to um, get to the Dragon Lord's castle at the end of the game. So very important that we get the Stones of Sunlight. Now we're ready to move on. So the next place we'll be going is we'll be going back to Garenham. We'll be going into the grave this time, the grave of Garen, to get, collect the silver harp. The silver harp is going to be used to trade for another one of those quest items for the rainbow drop, so very important to collect the silver harp. Just as importantly, however, we're going to be continuing to train up and make uh, progress towards level 8, which is going to be the level we need to do the golem successfully, which is a very important part of this part of this run. So here in Garenham, before we set foot into the grave, we're going to rest up by this chain vest, chain mail armor. Again, this is going to be pretty good armor. Big upgrade over the clothes, which we threw away to make room for other things earlier. Just going to make sure to equip all of this stuff. Steel sword. Oh. He's being blocked by an NPC here. You can't see him, but yeah, he's standing in the way. There he is. Thanks, pal. Lavitt's not too far behind. He's going to be collecting his items here in the castle and making his way to, to Garenham. So here in the grave, we're free to use a torch. This is a much more complicated dungeon that we do not need to traverse in the dark. So just using a torch will be helpful. This first floor has mostly easy encounters that Lavkian will probably be comfortable just attacking with his new steel sword until the enemies are defeated. Two hits is enough to defeat most of the enemies in here. The warlock is probably the toughest enemy. Oh, we went a little too far there. Uh, the second floor is also going to see stronger monsters, but not too bad. Uh, the third floor and on have very strong monsters, and we're going to want the sleep spell to handle many of them which we're going to learn at level 7. So coming up here, there's the third HP seed, a bunch of additional gold coins, and a magic key. The gold and the key aren't... Well, the gold actually might be necessary. The key isn't strictly necessary, but it's just going to help save us a little time. It's going to be faster than 
buying a key later. The warlock trying to put him to sleep here, Lavkian, but spell didn't work. So we're going to use one of the keys, maybe the one we just got, to open this door and make our way further into the grave. Oh, sleep spell. It's going to cost him a little bit of health working his way down here, but not a big deal. He's got plenty of MP and will be mostly spending a good bit of it on the heal spell if it becomes necessary. As much as possible, we want to preserve our medical herbs for the section right after this, the golem walk. So if it becomes necessary, he'll probably... These runners may consider using medical herbs, but for the most part, they're going to rely on the heal spell to, to keep them in good condition. All right, Lavitz has made his way. He's just entered the first floor. Lavkian ahead on the second floor. But he's definitely going to stop here before moving on and fight monsters until reaching level 7. I imagine he only needs to fight like one monster. It's been a really long time since he's seen anything now. <laughs> There's a monster. It's Mr. Wolf. Good. Opting not to use uh, Gira. A strong damage roll in the first swing probably helped to motivate him. But he's going to need a fireball for the uh, Iron Scorpion here. Good. That should be close. Yep. Excellent. Now that he's reached level 7, he's going to heal himself. Maybe twice even. You really want to be in good condition moving on. Most of the enemies down here are beatable. Um, although somewhat dangerous. But there's one enemy in particular down here. The Wraith Knight. The Skeleton uh, this guy here. Oh, back attack. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, he got away. That was a good good luck there. Yeah, that guy is really strong, and we can't fight him. Trying to fight him in battle will usually result in us being defeated. He's very resistant against sleep spell. Over, I think it's like 12% chance of working on him. It's very low. And um, the heal spell really isn't cost efficient at dealing with him. So... Got to run from the Wraith Knight. I think he can heal himself too, can he? He's really not something that you want to mess with. The other monsters down here can and really should be battled. We want to get experience. As I said earlier, we want to be level 8 to do the Golem Walk, the next section coming up. So A critical hit on the Meta Lord, Druin Lord, who's defeated. Those things are pretty obnoxious. They can heal themselves. Here is the Hell Ghost. Taking a little bit longer to defeat, but that's fine. So, Lapkian's acquired the Silver Heart. He's fighting monsters here. Uh, he's uh, trying to acquire more experience. I was just saying we need to reach level 8. So, the more experience we earn in the grave, the less experience we have to earn outside of Dondora, where the monsters are just as strong and are going to drain our resources that we'd like to keep. For the next part instead of wasting on uh, getting experience that we need to get to level 8. The golem will not be safe until level 8, so... Lavkian, he's out of resources. He's got no MP left. His HP looks pretty low. He's probably fixing to uh, death warp here in just a moment. He's probably going to try and defeat this hell ghost if he can. Sometimes they like to waste their time or be kind of weak like that. Good. We defeated one more enemy. That's pretty good. Oh, the Wraith Knight is going to kill him really quickly, though. Okay. Oops. Good. All right. So he's completed the grave. He needs 129 experience till the next level. That's really pretty good spot to be in. So... So ready to just use the camera wink and move on to the next section. So this is one of the most treacherous parts of the game and um, could be a little bit bumpy for one of these runners or both of them. Hopefully it won't be too bad, uh, but it is a very risky section of the game. 
uh, this next part, uh, we're going to be looking to go fight the golem that guards Melkito, uh, Cantlin Town. Um, in this version, unlike the in the original, where he's basically worth no experience, in this version he's worth a tremendous amount of experience, 2,500 points. Defeating him at level 8 is going to catapult us straight to level 11 and make a lot of other options available to us as far as earning experience goes, including the Dragon Loop, which we really can't do too much uh, with until we're at least level 11. I hope it's not too far behind dying in the grave. But he may need more experience till next level. Oh, not that much more. Just about one extra fight or so, half a fight really in the Domdor region, so. Still very close race, and this golem walk section could put a put a bit of a divide or make for a, a lead change here. Well this camera being wow, extremely rude. Taking the maximum number of hits to defeat and waking up right away. Fortunately, Lavkian was slain by the, the rude jerk bird. And he's going to have to, to start over here. He's earned a little experience, though, but not much. That's, that's too bad. So the golem, once we reach the golem, the golem is essentially free. As long as we execute the strat, as long as we get to the golem with enough health to survive one attack, which is 55 hit points, um, and we execute the strategy correctly, like there are no menu mistakes, then we can't lose the battle. It may take a long time, but we will defeat the golem. However, reaching the golem at level 8 is no easy task. We'll be walking through some of the most dangerous overworld sections at an inappropriate level. We do have the sleep spell, the heal spell, and plenty of medical herbs to, uh, to, to help us get through as easily as we can but uh, this section features some very powerful monsters and sometimes the things we try to do well they just don't work in the case of the fearsome shadow knight kage no kishi we really have no recourse except to just try and run and even two run fails can mean the end for our hero bopo so dying here in this golem walk section is not uncommon, but this is the main reason why we were really concerned about reaching level 8. Our maximum HP will not be high enough to defeat or to survive a blow from the golem for sure until we reach level 8. Going sooner is just, just asking to get bopped. Most of the enemies here in this uh, golem walk section will deal between like 20 and 30 points of damage per hit on you at this point, so this extra HP is really critical. So Lavis is the first one to reach level 8, and he's going to move. He's close to full health. He's a scorpion, he'll just run away from. So you're going to see him run away from most of the. Well, all of these monsters eventually. Some of them he may stop to uh, try and put them to sleep or do other things. Uh, the skeleton monsters, he's just going to have to run from the, the Wraith Knight and the Shadow Knight in particular are pretty bad. Or the Mage Chimera isn't exactly a, a picnic either. So you see him bumping into these tiles um, at an offset. This is a technique that we call half stepping. They've probably been used, probably seen them using at many points in the run. Um, when you're going up and down and walk into the corner of an impassable terrain like this, the game forces you around the tile and automatically corrects your path for you. The thing is that step actually doesn't contribute towards your next battle, the counter that counts down towards your next battle. So it's essentially like a free half step that you get that's a little bit safer. 58 HP, looks okay. And here we go. Lavitz making it through with no real issues here the first try. And he's gonna get punched, but then use the fairy flute. That'll cause the golem to fall asleep. Now the 
sleep effect from the fairy flute as well as the sleep spell in this version uh, give one turn of guaranteed sleep. So uh, if the worst case we get to the goal and we can always do flute attack, flute attack, flute attack repeatedly until eventually the golem will be defeated and we'll never take any damage. Lavis has plenty of supplies left, so he's opted to attempt to heal himself here um, before putting the golem back to sleep. And this is going to give him opportunities to attack multiple turns in a row. And then if the golem wakes up, he won't get smushed. All right, Lafkian making it through as well. So we got both runners here fighting the golem at the same time. That's very good. We should be seeing them start the dragon loop at pretty much the same point here. So this is pretty exciting. So the golem has 155 hit points. The runners, if they are paying close attention, can actually count the amount of damage they've done and can... Uh, use that to their advantage to know when the golem is about to be defeated and then just swing through instead of worrying about whether or not the golem wakes up. Ooh, Lavit scoring critical hit. Kaishin no Ichigeki. Critical hit does uh, is an attack that ignores defense power, so we don't do very much damage to this golem, only between 10 and 13 points, but a critical hit does close to 50 damage, so it can save a good... Well, each attack and flute cycle is basically about 10 seconds. So, yep, Labbit's carefully counting damage, knowing that the golem is going to die in two hits, that his HP is full. Just going to swing through two times. And the golem was defeated. So as, we, as I mentioned earlier, he earns 2,500 experience, catapults him straight to level 11, gives him access to this next town here, Melkito. Or Cantlin. So here in the town, we're beginning the dragon loot section. And to start off, uh, Lavitz is going to by depositing a bunch of items in the vault. This vault is a new feature that they added in this version. It lets you store items in gold for later use. Um, so he's going to deposit a bunch of items that quest items that he doesn't need right this second as well as the dragon scale the dragon scale would be nice to have but the uh the inventory slot is actually a little bit more important for us right now as we'll see very soon I'm grabbing a defense seed in the dresser there he's going to use it for another four defense power rest up at the inn golem walk is uh usually pretty rough on your hp and mp so healing up is a good idea here we're also going to resupply on keys. There's a key store here. You need to use a key in order to open it. Oh, Lavkian also with the critical hood on the golem. Nice. Nice, Kaishin. The golem was defeated. So he's not too far behind. He's going to finish leveling up. Level 10 and then 11, making his way in here. Lavit's finishing his final preparations. He's going to purchase a camera wing to go back to the castle. And... Uh, this merchant down here, oh, that's an NPC dresser, the third one that we collect in this run. And now here at the uh, this store here, this merchant sells holy water, or fairy water. We're gonna we're gonna stock up on this stuff. The fairy water uh, does a similar effect to this repel spell. What it does is in areas where you are a high enough level, the monsters simply won't show up at all. So now that we're level 11, uh, using the, the fairy water in this region means that there will... So now we've begun the dragon loop. We've stocked up on holy water, and we're heading over to the marsh cave. It's uh, using another holy water there as it expires to uh, keep it... Keep it fresh. Keep the monsters at bay. So here we're in the marsh cave. Now the dragon lord, when he kidnapped the princess, Princess Laura, he took her here to the marsh cave and put a powerful dragon set to guard her against any would-be heroes who would try and rescue her. But we're not just would-be heroes. We're true heroes, and we're going to go the dragon rescue the princess 
Here we go. We're going to use the key to open the door. There's going to be some little weak monsters here. Uh, the holy water is not consumed in the cave, but it doesn't work in the cave either. So, Okay, so here he's going to fight this dragon. The dragon has 153 hit points. Um, and the maximum damage it can deal is 20. So as long as Lavitz keeps his HP above 40 hit points, then he's safe to attack. Anytime his HP go goes below that, he's going to use the heal spell. Again, he's going to be counting damage. Once the dragon gets very weak, he's going to stop healing himself and just keep attacking. The ideal strategy for the dragon loop section, and this is going to be a prevailing um, theme throughout this dragon loop section, excuse me, is trying to end these battles with as few hit remaining hit points as possible. So counting and planning your attack is very important. So Labbit's finishing the first dragon at level 11, earning 950 experience and going straight to level 12. Wow, that's great. He's got 27 hit points left. That's not too bad. Anything under 30 is good and it's totally fine. So here he's going to talk to Laura. She's impressed that you rescued her from the dragon. Climbs in your arms. We're going to take her back to the castle, right? We just learned the outside spell at level 12. That'll get us right outside of the castle. Um, except I've been misleading you. We're not taking her back to the castle. We're going to take her to the swamp, and we're going to walk around in the swamp until we die. Oh, dear. Lafkian finishing that dragon off a little bit sooner than he anticipated. HP on that one. All right, so we died with the princess, and you'll notice she's no longer with us. She's actually been taken back to the Marsh Cave, and the Dragon Lord has stationed a brand new dragon for us, guarding her in the Marsh Cave. So we're going to go back to the cave, and we're going to fight the dragon again. As we saw earlier, he's worth experience, and that's a lot. Uh, fighting him is not too bad, and with the holy water repelling away all of the monsters... Um, getting back and forth to this marsh cave is actually going to be pretty swift. Uh, so we're going to be fighting this dragon over and over again. So to do the whole loop is basically leave from the castle, head to the marsh cave, defeat the dragon and collect your experience, talk to Laura and get her to come with you, and then die while Laura is in your arms. That'll reset the whole thing and we can start over. We're going to be doing this in this Dragon Loop section a total of seven times. We'll be defeating seven Dragon Loop dragons. Uh, each dragon will be a little bit different, and as I said earlier, there's the prevailing theme of trying to finish these battles with low HP, but um, each fight is going to gradually change and evolve as our character gets stronger. So now we're level 12, and the average number of hits we need to defeat this dragon has gone down but we're still needing to count damage. Our damage ranges have changed a lot. Our initiative rate begins to change as we level up, although there really isn't a big change until uh, 12, or 12 to 13 and then 13 to 14. See the biggest, biggest jumps in initiative rate. So let's just change our strategies a little bit. Um, As our uh, supply of holy water runs low, as well as our key supply runs out, we're going to have to plan on resupplying as well. So we're going to make a couple of couple of stops to get that stuff. Lavitz finishing dragon number two. Again, with close to 30 hit points, but he should still be fine. He should still have enough holy water steps to die in the, in the swamp before his holy water runs out. That's the basic goal. He's dead. That's two down. Meanwhile, Lapkin over here on the left fighting dragon number two of his own, not too far behind. One more head will do. There we go. 
The dragon was defeated. Abbott's using the last of his holy water. This will give him about 30 steps, 30 HP uh, in the swamp worth of holy water. So as long as this dragon goes about the same as the others have gone, then he'll have no problems uh, finishing this segment with enough holy water. We're out of holy water now, so after the conclusion of this one, the third dragon, this is when we're going to resupply on holy water. We're going to refill our inventory. This is why we put away all of quest items as well as the dragon scale. Having this fairy water, the room for all of this water is actually much more valuable. Something you'll just notice there a, a fight ago on Lavitz's screen is probably noticed throughout this run. The runners, as they encounter one of these weaker monsters in the cave, will use that opportunity to heal themselves. We've taken a little bit of damage walking through the swamps in order to get to the March Cave, so uh, um, we want to be topped off before we fight the dragon. In this case, we can use something like a ghost or a scorpion to, to heal up in battle, which is actually faster than using the menu. Uh, so getting a battle, using heal, and then running away basically resolves in about the same time as... Uh, about the same time as um, healing from the menu. So, Lavitz with a critical hit, defeating the third dragon. He's got 20 HP left. That'll be totally fine. Uh oh. Lavkian not far behind, starting dragon number three. So defeating the third dragon has leveled us up to level 13 and given us access to a brand new spell, the Return Spell. Uh, this will let us return to the castle instantaneously, but as it turns out, can actually be used directly in the castle in front of the king here to just leave the castle faster. So we're starting to save time on this next dragon from here on out by just returning. We're going to see that several times here. Anytime we need to leave the castle, just use the Return Spell. Lavkian with a pretty clean dragon number three as well. 24 hit points remaining. I generally like to play those first three dragons pretty safely. The first four, really. So anyway, Lavitz has run out of holy water early, earlier. Um, Lavkian is also out. He'll be doing the same thing Lavitz is doing here. Heading over to this store, resupplying on holy water, using one to get its effect then buying one more. That'll give us the maximum number for this section. Each holy water uh, lasts for a certain number of steps or tiles on this overworld, so as I said earlier, it is not diminished by um, the caves or towns, but it doesn't work there either. Lafkin uh, opting for a slightly different route here. Uh, he's taken... Oh, he's out of holy water from the earlier dragon. So he's decided to resupply his key count sooner. Uh, so he went ahead and returned back to town, resupplied on all of his keys. And now he's going to use these. Oh, yeah, you're gonna. Yeah, he forgot to get the holy water now, which means he's gonna have to come back and buy additional keys again. Hopefully he knows to, uh, to do that. Yeah, I've made this mistake too. Uh, you need to, if you do this technique, you need to make sure to buy the holy water first. So otherwise you're gonna be short a key. Lavitz is on the fourth dragon. He's level 13, so his damage Ranges have gone up. Um, his initiative rate has also increased quite considerably from something probably in the about the 70% range at level 12 to now like 90% at level 13. Probably better than that. So we can play these dragons a little bit 
a little bit riskier if we want. Dragon number four with uh, the path that he's chosen. Really? Yeah, okay, good. Lapkin is resupplying on keys. Should make sure that he has six. Good. Uh, Lavitz is going to also want to do what Lavkian resupply his key count, so he's going to take the princess back to the castle, use his last key to buy a bunch more keys, and then die on those barrier tiles. Now, uh, unless anything really tragic happens, both these runners should now be, after this, fully stocked up on keys. For the rest of the game, there will be no more key shopping. All right, Lavkian's taking care of the, the holy water and the key situation. He's heading over to dragon number four. Lavitz has resupplied his keys now as well, has died. We'll be beginning dragon number five here very shortly. Lavitz just taking a little bit of an extra edge there on account of Lavkin having to walk through the castle twice. But still probably only... Maybe two minutes, less than that, separating these two players. Which, coming up after the, the Dragon Loop, is one of my favorite sections, the Axe Knight. The Axe Knight who guards Roto's armor is another one of these potential, potential time swing moments. So we'll have to see how these runners fare against the Devil Knight who guards the armor. And of course, as always, if this race is never over until it's over, anybody who's familiar with this run, or if you're not, I'll tell you now, the, the final dungeon is extremely treacherous, and dying there costs a tremendous amount of time. The final boss is not free by any means, and can kill and will kill even the most experienced players. So even though some player might be seemingly quite far ahead, getting to the end of the game and then dying means means losing a lot of time, so. These runners being this close, a nice 6 HP dragon for Labkin. Playing the initiative odds that are in his favor now to get this nice aggressive dragon number four. That's pretty good. Wow, it's in battle with dragon number five, counting damage carefully. One more hit should do it. Good. 21 HP is fine. Now he's reached level 14. That's five dragons down. Two more to go. For the second dragon set of dragons, the... Uh, the HP is a little bit tighter, the holy water is a little tighter, so you really do want to try and push these dragons. The good news is our initiative rate is much better, so we can play a little bit a little bit more greedy. Okay. Lavitz has defeated five dragons and died again, so he's completed five rounds. Took a quick look at his experience, and he will have no problems reaching level 15 from two more dragons. Sometimes you end up just a few points short, and you need to pay attention to that. Maybe bash a couple of scorpions along the way next time you come through the mountain cave, or the marsh cave. Uh, Lavitz is correctly remembered. I often forget here. After five drafts, you come to the vault and collect your items that you left here, now that you have the room for it. We won't be doing this holy water thing much longer. So he's headed over here to, yeah, the vault boss. Classic. It's actually all quite difficult to do all that set of menus quite efficiently. Um, especially, like, our runners are not native Japanese speakers and probably can only read maybe a little bit, myself included. Um, 
So so handling all that section and what's going on can be a little bit treacherous. But he's gotten through no problem. He's left the, the fairy flute in the vault. We don't need that, but he's gone ahead and taken out the silver harp, which we'll trade for the Staff of Rain in just a minute. Um, the dragon scale, which he equipped, and Stones of Sunlight. Lavkian being slain by the swamp after five dragons. He's going to be heading over to the vault and get his supplies. Also, he's going to be good on XP, so... Good news. We definitely want to be level 15 at the end of this, this dragon loop section, so that's why we do seven dragons total. Um, the, uh, the Axe Knight is going to be a pretty reasonable battle at level 15, although not free. There isn't a whole lot we can do to manage the battle, but nevertheless, our odds are pretty decent at that level. Uh, that's approaching dragon number six in a fairly, fairly conservative way. So he's defeated six. He just needs one more now. Lapkin's collected his vault gear. I didn't see it to make sure if he equipped the dragon scale or not, but he hopefully remembered. I believe it's four points of defense in this version, which doesn't seem like much, but it actually makes for a pretty big threshold, in particular against the upcoming Axe Knight. Um, he has a chance of defeating you in three hits, even if you do have the dragon scale, that chance is very low. And we need four attacks to defeat him, so... Uh, without the dragon scale, our chances of being killed before we can deal that fourth blow are much higher. So remember to get your dragon scale. Remember to equip it. Looks like it's on. That's good. All right, dragon number six. Oh, that's a critical hit. Vibkin here quickly going to, for the, uh, the iron shield. Um... There's no parry or defend command, so um, in order to drive his HP down, he decided to waste turns by using his Iron Shield as an item in battle, which of course does nothing except let, give the dragon an opportunity to sink his teeth into you a couple of times. So the critical hit, he was going to defeat him way too soon, so wisely opting to waste a couple of turns there. Now his HP is only 20, which is much better. And he'll have no problems here. Sprinkling on one more holy water, dying, and have plenty of holy water to get him back to the cave one last time. Lavitz here, reaching the final dragon of his dragon loop, dragon number seven. This one here, once he slays it, will ascend him to level 15. Conveniently enough, as we run out of holy water, we have to learn repel. And there we go. Lavitz has defeated seven dragons and reached level 15. Lavkian, not far behind, traversing through the, the swamp outside of the marsh cave here en route to the final dragon. Now that we don't have any holy water, we just use the repel spell instead to, to keep the monsters at bay here, as Lavitz has opted to do. Uh, we've taken the princess with us again. We do have the intention of fighting the Marsh Cave Dragon one more time on our way through to the final dungeon. Uh, so taking the princess here and dying with her at some point will ensure that the dragon comes back for us one more time. But depending on the fate of our runners at the Axe Knight, you may see our hero carrying lore around for quite some time. Or maybe not. We'll see. While we're over here at the Marsh Cave, this is a pretty efficient, pretty reasonable time. We'll just cast Repel a few times, walk up here, and trade in our Silver Harp. 
from the Staff of Rain, Lapkian here finishing up the Dragon Loop. Just a couple of seconds behind. Both of our runners advancing forward in this run pretty smoothly. Small setbacks off for both of them, but nothing too severe just yet. I think the biggest thing may have been Lavkian, unfortunately, getting killed by that Chimera. Outside of Dumdora, that was that was kind of rough. And then Lavitz had the setback in the mountain with the Meta. So I think that's been the two major things. But other than that, we're on to the next thing here. Coming up, it is the Axe Knight. Akuma no Kishi, the Devil Knight. Buried in the ruined town of Domdora, Hawksness is um, Roto's armor, or Erdrick's armor in the Dragon Warrior version. Um, this is the best armor in the game. It has a bunch of super awesome properties. Most notably, it has the highest defense power of every suit of armor in the game, makes us immune to damage tiles, and allows us to recover one point of missing HP with every half tile we take. If you notice this game is broken up into half tiles instead of full tiles, each half tile will restore a po full point of hit points. So Lavitz over here on the right doing battle with the Axe Knight. He's guarding the armor, and we really want this armor, so it's going to take four hits to defeat him. Okay, failed, excuse me, failed sleep spell is good news. Lavitz is going to have no problems defeating the Axe Knight from that point. Typically in the Axe Knight battle, uh, all we do is continue to attack until the Axe Knight dies or until we die. Um, typically what will happen is you and the enemy will trade blows, and then on the last turn, if you go first, you'll win. If the Axe Knight goes first, you'll lose. Uh, however, the Axe Knight also has the Sleep Spell. If he tries to cast Sleep Spell and fails, this is very good. It's giving you an extra bonus turn, basically. But if you fall asleep you're in a lot of trouble. You have a chance of waking up immediately, in which case the sleep basically didn't do anything, but being asleep for even two turns is basically a recipe for dying to the Axe Knight. Oh. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Marked the armor for me. Lavitz has acquired Roto's armor, and he's going to be moving on to the next part of the game. Where we are going to begin our final preparations for the end of the game. We're collecting uh, the best armor here. Yeah, so we're definitely, definitely going to be making our final preparations. We need the third item to make the rainbow drop, Roto's token, the seal of Erdrick, which is buried in the swamp south of south of Cantlin. So we're going to have to head down there. Oh no. Oh, Lafkin was back attacked by the Axe Knight, but Sleep Spell failed. Sleep spell worked that time, but he woke up immediately. This fight is still going okay. If he can just go first with four hit points left, Lavkian defeats the Axe Knight as well. First try, nice job. Both players advancing through that section, no problems. And it's just a very slight difference in that section, only 10 seconds, indicating that Neither player was defeated by the Axe Knight. That is good news. So they've uh, picked up Roto's armor and equipped it, thrown away the old chain vest. This is just to make room for, for other things so it won't get in the way. All right, so we're going to be... We're pretty much all set. We've got all three items to make the rainbow drop and <laughs> back attack by Metal Slime and he ran away. Classic. Classic Metal Slime. Um, we don't have a lot of opportunities left, so I should mention Metal Slime if he does show up on Lavkian's, Lavkian's stream, and if he is successful in killing it. It is going to be quite rare, but uh, there's maybe a few more tiles here where he can encounter one. It may shift the race in his favor if he does encounter and defeat a Metal Slime, but it looks like he's left the encounter zone now, so... 
No, it doesn't look like either players will be killing a Metal Slime. Metal Slime is a rare monster that appears in certain areas in the overworld here. We only come through there here, and as well as through the Golem Walk, so... And the Golem Walk, we're typically hoping not to see monsters, but... Metal Slime does happen to show up, and we do happen to get lucky to kill the Metal Slime. He's worth a lot of experience, close to 800 points, which can save a lot of time in this section right here, as well as um, make your Dragon Loop a little bit easier if you end up killing the Metal Slime before the Golem. But no such luck here. Uh, the Metal Slime did not really show up for any appreciable amount of time. Uh, they're likely to run away as soon as you encounter them. We actually do have a special frame manipulation technique that we use to ensure that we get hits on the Metal Slime each turn. However, the technique does not affect his chances of running away. So if he does show up, we can ensure that by turn five, we'll, we will have definitely killed the Metal Slime, no matter what. Um, but the Metal Slime sticks around for five turns. Well, that's pretty lucky. Basically, the game is determining whether or not you hit if you don't have enough attack power, which the Metal Slime's defense is way too high. If you don't have enough attack power, then the game basically flips a coin to determine whether you do zero damage or one damage. Uh, but it's based on the frame count, whether or not it's even or odd. And we have a, uh, a technique of holding and releasing the button at certain times to ensure that the frame counter advances a specific number of frames each time, preserving the same even or oddness between attacks. Um, that way we can guarantee that if the first turn, well, we can't... First turn, we don't know what's going to happen, but if we miss, we have a technique of ensuring that the next turn we will hit, and if we hit, we have a technique of ensuring that the next one will also hit. So that's the that's the general general idea of the, the even odd manipulation technique. It actually does not affect our chances of scoring critical hits either, so you can always just hope you get a crit. So anyway, the runners have collected all of the valuable quest items ready to go to Dragon Lord's Castle, with basically the notable exception being fighting the Dragon Lord at this level is not feasible. Technically speaking, the odds of uh, the Dragon Lord fight is completable at level 17, but the odds are tremendously bad. Uh, level 18, our characters are going to see a tremendous spike in not only maximum HP, but strength. And we're going to need both, both of those increases to improve our chances of fighting the Dragon Lord. At level 17, our odds are very very bad and in a race situation like this no matter how desperate it is you will not see any of these racers going for for level 17 dragon lord strategies so uh to that end we're going to be doing level 18 dragon lord which is going to basically mean getting level 17 before we head to the castle and then working our way up to level 18 by defeating the monsters we encounter along the way in the castle picking up uh roto sword the sort of erdrick the best weapon in the game, using that to bash more monsters on our way to the Dragon Lord, reach level 18 in the process, and then throw down. Uh, so, in order to reach level 17, or close to that, we don't actually have to reach exactly level 17. How long these runners decide to stay in this region is kind of up to them. Uh, there's a sort of bit of a bit of play you have with how early or how late you want to leave. Leaving earlier means you're going to have to earn more experience in the castle. Uh, the monsters in the castle are potentially more efficient in terms of experience, but also potentially lethal. And dying in the castle is going to cost a lot of time. So typically, if you want to be safer, you want to spend more time out here in this, this Cantlin region. Grinding is close to level 17, or even beyond level 17, if you'd like. Um, but going too much further beyond level 17 is probably not, not really worth it. Um, but you can leave as early as... Um, 
what, 16,050 experience points. This will ensure that defeating the Marsh Cave Dragon, which we're going to do along the way to getting the, the Rainbow Drop, will get you to level 17, which is the absolute minimum we need. We're going to be taking advantage of an inn at level 17, so getting to level 17 and then replenishing our HP to, or our MP excuse me, to maximum is going to be very critical. Having the extra MP is going to be very important. The most important spell at the end of the game here is going to be the Heal More spell, which costs 8 MP to cast. Um, we're basically counting how much MP we have in how many casts of Heal More do we have. Um, Typically, unless our MP seeds have rolled the absolute worst possible, which is happens about, well, it must be 1 in 27 chance, uh, the runners will have at least 96 MP or 12 casts of Heal More. Any additional MP beyond that may be used for various things if they would like. Um, however, uh, oftentimes you'll have 96 or 97, you'll have, which is fine, not unusual. You do not want to spend any MP to take yourself below, you know, that threshold where it's going to cost you a heal more. So if you have 98 MP, you can cast a sleep spell and it won't cost you a heal more. But if you try and do it at 97, then you're, you're shorting yourself one heal more. Now you're in dangerous situations. You may have to expend one heal more to keep yourself from being killed by, let's say, like an Axe Knight who decided to put you to sleep for a very long time, or a particularly rude um, Death God Knight in the basement, or even the Stone Man can sometimes just be a, be a pain. But there's not too much going on here. Both runners are just going to be accumulating experience. Uh, this whole grind section out here takes about 15 minutes in total uh, to go from where they were at level 15 all the way up to about level 17. Um, there are four monsters that they encounter in this region. Um, the Killer Wolf, the Star Camera, the Wizard, and the Dragon. Uh, the wolf is worth the fewest experience, but he's probably the easiest to beat. Um, second in terms of experience is the star camera. The star camera is actually probably the worst enemy to fight. Honestly, his HP is pretty high, sometimes takes three hits to defeat, and he knows the heal more spell, so sometimes you have to put them to sleep after they heal themselves, so, so that they don't heal themselves again. <laughs> The wizard is probably the strongest enemy from an offensive standpoint, but usually is defeated in two hits. His physical attack is weak, but he has hurt more, and that can do a lot of damage. Uh, but he's worth a lot of experience, 120. And then the dragon is worth the most experience. Uh, usually they die in two hits, but sometimes it takes three. Uh, but they're worth 135. All of the monsters in this region show up at 20% encounter rate, except for the Star Camera takes up at two of the encounter blocks, so he is at 40% encounter rate, which is too bad because jerk birds. There isn't too much variance as far as strategy or time is concerned. Um, the the wolves, the wizards, and the dragons, you're pretty much just going to attack them until they die. Um, <laughs> Did the metal slime die? No, no, there. It it back attacked him and ran away. He had to do anything. No, there was no even inputting a command against the metal. Um. So we're just gonna keep keep hanging out here, keep fighting monsters. Uh, this, like I said earlier, the star camera, uh, you can also just repeatedly attack him until he decides to heal himself. And you'll probably see the runners do this technique where they'll attack one time, then use the sleep spell, and then continue attacking it. This has to do with how the heal spell, the heal more spell is going to restore him to his max HP of 73, uh, regardless of how many hit points he spawned with. All the enemy, the random encounters, appear with a variable amount of health up to a maximum value. But after they heal themselves, the birds are pretty much going to that maximum value, 73 every time. Which means having to hit them three times, which means possibly 
causing them to heal themselves again. The attack, sleep, attack, attack thing is just a way of minimizing the chance that they use heal a second time. Okay. So, probably just a little bit more. I'd say about two more minutes. Um, and Lattice is probably going to, who has a little bit more experience, is probably going to be looking to, to, to death warp here. As I mentioned earlier, we've got to get rid of the princess. So, uh, there's a candy swamp we'll take advantage of. We'll just unequip her and uh, take another mud bath and. Get a nice HP MP refill. Get a fresh dragon in the cave. And that's going to be our plan for making the, our final approach. So for the most part, we're sticking in these hills tiles, which have a very high... We want to face as many monsters as we can, as quickly as we can. We want to minimize the amount of time we spend walking around looking for things. Maximizing the amount of time we fight. Roto's armor is also healing us 1 HP per half step, so that's really why we uh, waited to come out here. Once we get Roto's armor, coming out here is the most efficient way of gaining experience for us. However, sometimes we'll take a little too much damage from these fights. So you see Labkian here doing on the left, he's recovering his HP by using the planes tiles and the half tile mechanic I described earlier to hopefully avoid a battle while he heals up with the Roto's armor. The half tiles that don't penalize us in terms of uh, encounter rate, actually still heal us with the armor, so it's sort of a, a double dipped effect here. Um, we get all of the good and none of the bad for doing the half tile technique with Roto's armor. It's really great. And we'll be using that technique probably a couple more times in the Dragonlord's Castle to help recover when we may or may not want to be facing monsters. So, Lavitz is probably just about ready. He's probably going to check his experience soon. Yeah, there he is. So he's really close to, yeah. He needs about 300 experience, a little less than that, to reach his level. So he's going to unequip his armor. He's going to fight a few more monsters, probably reach level 17 in the process, or maybe get very close. But he is looking to be defeated here in battle. He's going to try and... Try and fight one more thing as his HP starts to dwindle here in the swamp. So hopefully he can defeat this dragon, but without the armor equipped, he does a lot of damage. Nope. Oh. He was slain by the dragon. Oh well. Killing it would be nice. He'd have 135 extra experience, but not killing it is just not too bad. Lapkin's checking his experience. He doesn't look too far behind either. He's going to have to do the same death warp technique, so. But he's only a couple monsters behind, so yeah, it looks like he's unequipping and getting ready to go here. So the two runners are probably going to have very similar experience lines coming into the castle. Uh, Labbit's having a little bit of a head start in terms of physical location. But not much separating these two. As is expected, we came into the grind only about 90 seconds splitting them, so... Being that it's just the strong Melkito grind, not too much happens there, unless, uh, unless a wizard gets really out of control and kills somebody, then it's pretty much going to take the same amount of time for everybody. Yeah, it looks like Lavitz has only about 150 more experience. Well, no, less than that. Only about 100 more. So... So there's no additional lead here to consider. It's just, just how far ahead he is physically. So he's headed over here into the Marsh Cave uh, to fight the dragon one more time. Lavkian doing the same right behind him. They're going to be making Hell Spell on the Overworld course to avoid all these battles now that we've cranked all the way up to level 16 level 17 by the end of fighting this dragon basically the entire overworld is now pretty much safe 
that being said, we won't be able to use Repel to make our final approach. But, uh... There we go. Lavit's defeating the Dragon Lord. He's reached... Bonk. He's reached level 17. Bumped his head there, casting the wrong spell. And now he's got to make his way to the south side of the cave. Or through to Rainbow Drop Cave. Make sure we trade the three quest items for the Rainbow Drop. We'll work our way to Rimmeldar to rest up and fill our supplies. And then it will be off to the final dungeon. The Dragon Lord's Castle. This race is probably close enough to the point where, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, obviously deaths in the final dungeon represent massive time swings, but this race is so close that I bet both players could complete the Dragon Lord's Castle first try, and either one of them could still win the race. Latkian's a little bit behind physically, but if he gets better encounters, more red dragons, let's say, in the basements, floors, or blue dragons along the way, who are worth more experience and generally easier to fight than things like Axe Knights and uh, Stone Men, particularly before you get Rose Art or Sword, uh, he can make up a lot of time by, uh, by getting the experience he needs a little bit faster. As I mentioned, uh, we will be fighting our way down through the final dungeon on an effort to reach level 18. Fighting the Dragon Lord before level 18 is not advisable. There we go. Lavitz has brought the three items together. The Stones of Sunlight, the Staff of Rain, and Erdrick's Token. Together, Niji no Shizuku, the Rainbow Drop. We're going to take this to the Dragon Lord's Castle to build a bridge. That will take us there. Lapkian using the repel spell, working his way down. The two runners basically high-fiving here as they pass. Very close. And as I said, there's not much of a difference in terms of experience for the two runners either. So. Lavitz is going to cast Repel one more time before entering the town. This effect is going to be preserved through the end, so it is going to give us a little bit of a head start. But as I said earlier, spending MP from this point on after resting is basically a no-no. So that means we won't be using the Radiant spell. We'll be using a torch. He's going up here to buy a torch as well as a bunch of medical herbs. If we do need to heal or supplement healing uh, outside of battle, we won't be using the heal spell or the heal more spell. We'll be using medical herbs as well as mostly relying on Roto's armor. So with Roto's armor being so powerful, uh, fighting monsters in this final dungeon actually becomes somewhat manageable, particularly on the earlier floors where it's mostly just the same encounters as we saw earlier. But as we work our way further and further down, the monsters are going to get more powerful. We're going to get access to Erdrick's sword most of the way through the dungeon, and that's going to up our, our killing power quite a lot. In particular, the Axe Knights and Stone Men are going to be much more, much more manageable. From there on, we'll be heading to the very deepest floors of the castle, which have the strongest enemies in the game. Um... Uh, the Armored Knight, uh, sort of red suit of armor guy, Shinigami no Kishi in this version, the Death God Knight, is definitely the most fearsome foe that we're going to encounter. Uh, the Red Dragon, which is normally a fearsome opponent in the original version, Dragon Warrior, is actually very, very good enemy to encounter. Um, they're worth 350 experience points, basically double or in some cases more than that, most of the enemies uh, down there and are actually very easy to defeat. Their physical attack is quite strong, but they actually have a scripted AI that does not attack until turn three. So you're guaranteed to take less than 20 damage on the first two turns. So you can often defeat them by taking very little damage. So Lavis has made his way here into Sherlock Castle, the final dungeon. 
Apkia not far behind. So this final dungeon, while I said that encounters are mostly manageable, some of them are dangerous and some of them can be lethal. Uh, getting killed in here is very bad, and if either of these runners die, they're basically back to square one in terms of this part of the game, so a lead change will happen immediately if someone dies here, so... Still anybody's race, it's not over until someone defeats the Dragon Lord here, as uh, Dragon Lord 1 can basically be a huge thorn in anyone's side, no matter what level you are. These earlier floors, these top two floors of the castle are going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, the only powerful enemy that we can encounter early on is the Axe Knight. Uh, ooh, only 70 seconds, yeah. A couple of red dragons can make that time right up. So keep an eye out on the uh, encounters and uh, the encounter handling that these runners decide to take. Here, the Axe Knight here, uh, showing up on Lavkian screen, screen. He's opting to run away from it, which is the safe approach. While they can be defeated in three hits at this level, they often take four, and uh, they have the sleep spell. Uh, falling asleep for even two or three turns can mean risking it as far as uh, whether or not you're actually going to defeat this thing in time before he kills you. Lavitz is further down in the dungeon now. He's encountering Stone Man, which is definitely too tough for him to defeat without Roto's sword, so he's opting to run away from that as well. The wizards are good to fight still, of course. 120 experience and a 40% encounter rate on these floors is the Blue Dragon, Kisu Dragon. Uh, he's worth the most out of all the enemies on this section, uh, 180 points. And... Generally fairly easy to defeat their physical attack. Again, very strong, but they also have a... selects a fairly weak breath attack. It's the same breath attack that the regular dragons have, or that the star cameras have. Or even the red dragons have the same fire breath attack that only does 20 damage. There's a blue dragon that he's defeated. That's a good encounter. He's healing himself up a little bit before taking the stairs down. The encounter... Uh, the encounter variable resets every time they go stairs, so you'll see them sometimes walking around near stairs to heal themselves with Rhoda's armor before moving on, or sometimes walking around stairs looking for a monster before moving on if they want to fight things. Trying not to waste that uh, threat that they've built up before moving on to the next floor. Lavkian now on B2 is going to encounter the more dangerous enemies here. Lavitz is on B4 now, working his way back up. He's going to get Roto's sword here uh, just as soon as he can get away from this stone man who's being quite stubborn. 3x run fail. Did a lot of damage. Oh, and another early battle. This could be dangerous. Okay. He should use a medical herb if he wants to... Oh, he's going to just use stairs a few times here to heal. That's an acceptable choice, too. Oh, there he goes. Now he is using a medical herb. His HP was quite low. Generally, we want to rely on red between fights, but if we conclude a battle with low HP, well, we might get a fight before we get healed up, and then we can't fight no matter what. So there we go, he's collected Roto's sword. This is, as I mentioned, the strongest sword in the game, and we're going to need this to defeat the Dragon Lord. And it's also going to make fighting a bunch of these monsters here a lot easier. Axe Knights, which used to take three hits on average, now only take two hits on average. Stone Man will sometimes die in three hits, but often will still take four. Blue Dragons, two to three hits now is often the typical instead of three to four. All right. Yeah, we've got our... Uh, hopefully we'll... The red dragons in this version are actually here to enforce fun. They come 
with their squad cars loaded full of party favors and goodies and balloon animals and everything. They, they go all out. It's a great time when the fun police show up here. But we won't be seeing them until the next floor. For now, Flavit's working his way down the next section here. He's going to fight a few of these guys on his way down. He may check his experience before moving any further. Typically, you don't want to advance into these lower floors until you have about a thousand experience or less till next level. Ooh, critical hit against Stone Man. Kaishin no Ichigeki. Stone Man was defeated. Okay, so Lavit still needs a fair bit of experience. 1350, 1356 to be precise. So he's opting to fight more encounters here on these safer middle tier floors rather than dive down into the higher, higher risk floors. The Death Duck God Knights, the Armor Knights show up 40% of the time and are not really fight. In fact, will often make your life more difficult than it's worth. So the monsters up here are much easier to fight. We can fight everybody up here with now with no trouble. But this is one of those big risk reward moments. Um, if you do want to chance it, you can dive down and just hope that you don't see Armor Knight. Hope you see Red Dragon instead. Ooh, I just missed Lavkian's experience. He just checked it. I missed. But uh, he's deciding to stay up here as well, so he must still need... He must not be comfortable moving on just yet. All right. Lavit's using the stairs here to heal himself up again. Like I said, going up and down these stairs is re-rolling that encounter encounter threat value so this is definitely lowering his chances of seeing monsters before he's healed up All right, both players probably just looking to fight a couple more enemies all right Lavitz has decided he wants one more encounter before me, I think Lavkey and using the same stairs trick here to uh, to make sure that his HP gets to full before moving on. He's ready to dive. Lavit's experience might be just a tad higher. So he may not be as reliant on encounters here. Shinigami deciding not to heal himself, so Lavkian will defeat that. This is very close here. Lavit's opting to fight the Shinigami here, but once they heal themselves, it becomes very difficult to fight. Opting to run away after it healed himself is the right idea here. Oh, Lavkian unfortunately getting in a very bad spot against Shinigami. Having to run away, but deciding the run rate was not as good as he'd like. Use the heal more instead. So it did end up saving his life, which keeps his chances alive, but with one fewer heal more. It's, is going to make the Dragon Lord fight a little bit scarier, but it's not going to make it impossible. Lots of Death God Knights. That's all we're seeing here tonight. Oh, nice Kaishin, though. Uh, Lavit's also having to burn the heal more on the, on the Shinigamis. Armor Knights really... Uh, draining our players of their valuable MP. But both of them really want to stay here in this castle. Uh, Lavit's forced to fight another Death God Knight. Lavkian is much further along physically. He's going to be up near the throne here. But I think they have about the same experience. They're both getting pretty close here, so... Lavkian may be slightly ahead here. I'm not quite sure. Using another medical herb after fighting the stone man is a pretty safe idea. Hmm, this is very close. Both runners are down a heal more. Concerned, but... 
either way, experience is very close. They're both basically here at the end, so it's going to be whoever hits, uh, hits 18 first, and then whoever wins, wins the battle. But the first player to 18 has a good chance at winning this race. Mm, Lavkian, unfortunately, having to invest another heal more on these these really rude Shinigamis. He's down to 80 MP now, which is starting to put him in kind of a dangerous place. He probably will not invest any other additional MP in trying to keep himself going. Lavit's looking for battles, still looking for battles. Wow, so many, so many armor knights. Red Dragon, oh, finally, Red Dragon can appearance on Lavkian's stream. So as you see, his first action is Fire Breath, second one is Stop Spell, third one didn't even happen. Both players reaching level 18 now, pretty much the same time. Both players are going to get their HP filled up using the Half Tile technique as well as possibly a Medical Herb. And then begin the fight. Lavkian beginning the fight just seconds sooner, but his MP is lower. This is extremely close, so Dragonlord 1 is the first part. It takes 7 hits to defeat him, but we gotta knock off 2 every time he casts Heal More on himself. He also has the Sleep Spell, which can cause us to die. Both players encountering a fair bit of sleep shenanigans here. Once our HP falls below 40, we're gonna have to heal ourselves. But as long as we end the battle with at least 55 hit points, which is why we're keeping track of the, the HP totals here, Oh, okay. I must have missed a critical hit on Lavkian's stream, I think. Or maybe he just got no sleep or no heals. So he's at 64 MP with two medical herbs. Opting to use medical herb on turn one, that's correct. So Dragonlord Phase 2 has a uh, scripted turn order. Um, whereas attacks happen in uh, sequence. Uh, and as such, we have HP lines that we stay above. As long as we stay above these lines, we're safe to attack. Once we fall below these lines, it's time to heal. Uh, the turn order, when we go to heal ourselves, we really want to go second when we heal. Uh, so our turn order, as well as the Dragon Lord's decision on what action he chooses on turn four, which is actually random. He has two different things he can decide to do. That has a major impact on how much MP we need to win this fight. Coming in here with uh, the MP that and resources Lavian had, he has a very good chance of getting through here. Lav is also in a pretty good shot. Lavian just a little bit ahead in terms of the fight progression. His MP is running out, but is close to winning. Oh, Kaishin no Ichigeki, critical hit. It's going to make sure that he defeats the Dragon Lord. Oops. There we go. <laughs> wow, it's running out of MP, but... Oh, just barely not enough. Close. But that's gonna, that's gonna settle it. Lavkian defeating the Dragonlord just a little bit ahead of Lavitz. Lavitz, unfortunately, did not defeat the Dragonlord this time around. Now in a race scenario, if both players were defeated, both of them would have the option of simply casting Return, casting Repel, and working their way back to try again. Uh, in this case, however, Lavkian is the first one to defeat the Dragon Lord, and he will be winning. GG. Thanks, Thanks to everybody who watched. I hope you enjoyed today's race. Lavitz is walking his way back. Looks like he wants another, another crack at it. So he'll be repelling his way over there. He'll just have to head over to Rimmeldar. He's going to rest up, resupply everything, and uh, head back and try again. Now that he's level 18, his MP is even higher. They've replenished uh, what he was missing. So the second time around is even easier. Um, the, the power gains from going from level 18 excuse me, level 18 to level 19 are not very substantial. So the fighting encounters here is not going to improve our chances of defeating the Dragon Lord substantially. So, um, 
so we'll just ought to run away from all battle attempt once we reach level 18. Level 20 has very nice stat gains, but unfortunately level 19 does not improve our chances much. So as mentioned before, the timing occurs ending as at the end of the credits. So coming up here in just a moment, we'll have the official time here for Lavkian in just a moment. This is the final scene here. Hey, mind if I jump in here real quick? The end. Split time here on my screen at 140, 48. Can you one hear hour, me? 40 minutes, 48 seconds. Yeah. For Dragon Quest One Super Famicom. Which is a very good race time. Yeah, here is going to refill his supplies and head back over for Racket the Dragon. So he's rested up, purchased another torch, refilled his medical aids. Hello, hello, hello. He's ready to go again. So, in regards to the race, I hope everybody really enjoyed today. Uh, it was a really good race. Uh, I think uh, it was really close. Uh, we had some good lead changes um, at different points. Coming into the castle, it was really close and tense, and it was really fun to see, uh, see how... How Lavkian was able to make up that time. Able to finish up the Dragonlord fight, even though he was down a fair bit of MP. But uh, Nina, can you can you hear me? All in all, he did a did a great job there at the final dungeon and finished the boss at the end. Clavitz, who otherwise had a very good run, other except for the, uh, the little hiccup in the mountain cave stumbling here at the very end of the castle. But that can be the problem. Sometimes the Dragon Lord is cruel. Yeah, he can't. He can't hear either of us. Can you hear me? All right. So as I mentioned earlier, he's just Lavitz is just going to be making his way down through here the this dungeon a second time, just running away from everything. Yeah, I'm talking with Lavkian a little bit about about how uh, how he expected things and uh, how his plan played out uh, in this tournament and uh, generally for our our rules are allow for us to to watch the other competitors when we're playing races and adjust our strategies accordingly. Um, so he decided at the strong grind, even though he was. Behind a little bit up to that section, he decided to leave at the same time, roughly the same time that his opponent left. As it turns out, their experience values were pretty close. It was only a couple hundred points that separated them, so he wasn't too far behind in experience. Uh, and then electing to dive a little bit into the final part of the dungeon a little bit sooner 
uh, looked like that, uh, that. Although it did end up costing him another, a lot of MP before the fight itself, uh, everything did play out. Um, did play out uh, well enough in the end with the very close Dragon Lord fight, including a critical hit at the end that I'm not entirely convinced was strictly necessary, but it definitely helped make it a lot safer. It may have come down to turn order or damage rolls uh, for the final turns, which is not what you want to rely on. Uh, this Axe Knight being kind of rude. A lot of run fails. But... Bopo's going to hang in there on Lavitz's stream. Just a little bit further, we'll be uh, back to the final battle here. So now that we don't have to fight these these red armor knights, we can just run away, and it's a lot safer there. It's extremely unlikely that we take enough damage to the point where we're in any kind of danger. But if uh, the encounter rate is very high, it's possible. At this point, like I said, we're not interested in fighting anything, so the average amount of damage we take per encounter is much lower. Just a little bit further, Lattice is going to be working his way around. As soon as this wizard leaves him alone, three. Three times run fail. Okay, that should be it. His conditions should be good, so he's ready to start the fight. Round number two. Supplies are refreshed. His MP is refreshed. Let's give it another go here against the Dragon Lord. Phase one is going to play out the same way. He's going to heal anytime he's under 40 health. Beyond that, he's just going to attack and count damage so that... Um, wow, miss much? It was twice in a row, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, Dragon Lord Dodge. Okay. So we want to stay above 40 to make sure we don't die and are getting good value during the fight, but we need to end this part with at least 55 hit points so we don't get incinerated as soon as the battle starts. So with... 72 MP, plenty of medical herbs, provided the, the turn order is respectable and the menuing is correct. That's good there. Oh, dodge. That's funny. Yeah, he should have no problem. And a critical hit. Wow, yeah, he... Defeating the Dragon Lord from here. He'll simply use a medical herb. Attack. Probably only need a couple more heals from this point. So Lavitz being careful to stay above those HP lines, but yeah. Nice brief Dragon Lord 2 fight. The Dragon Lord was defeated. 
And now with the dragon lord slain for Lavitz, all he has to do is return back to the castle and talk to the king. And we'll collect time here at the end. All right, there it is. That's going to be last input for Lavitz. We'll wait till the end of the credits to get his official time. But that's it. GG. Special thanks to Randomania for hosting our tournament. Once again, thank you all so much for uh, for all the setup and support and re-hosting you guys have been doing. It's been really terrific. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much to everybody who came out and watched today. I hope you enjoyed tonight's race. It was a really good one. Nice close race throughout uh, throughout the whole part here at the end. Uh, separated a lot by the Dragon Lord at the conclusion. Leading up to the Dragon Lord was definitely no way to tell who was going to win until the very end there. Uh, definitely uh, give a support to, to our runners here, Lavkian and Lavitz951. Follow and support them if you are not already doing so. Uh, you can probably get a link here in the chat for their channels. And definitely continue to check out Randomania right here uh, for more really cool events, as well as the continuation of the Dragon Quest I Super Famicom Tournament. We'll have more rounds of that coming up before you know it. So the last scene of the credits is going to be wrapping up here for Lavitz, and we'll be able to take time once more. I want to thank everyone else for coming out and watching tonight. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope exciting content right here on Random Mania. Almost there. GG. All right, so unofficial official time one fifty two thirty. All right. All right. So once again, thanks so much for everybody watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the race. It was a pretty good one. Um, here's, uh, we got some events coming up for you. Wednesday on Randomania is going to be 10 a.m. We have Final Fantasy Tournament, fourth round pairings and 9 p.m. Eastern Dragon Warrior Randomizer Weekly Races. So if you enjoy Dragon Quest and Dragon Warrior, don't miss the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Races. Thanks so much for Randomania for hosting us. My name is Sumdiener, and I hope you had a great time here. Have a great night.